Good everyone, welcome to this video, and today we have a review on the FC20 Biz. This is a brand new rank 2 Bellarine 2.3 Italian attacker, added as part of, well, as part of patch 2.0. Obviously I'm just going to call it that because I'm, I, I can't be bothered to say the exact term for this patch, but it's 2.0, we all know that. And the best way to describe this vehicle is a cross between a duck and a bow fighter, to put it simply. This vehicle is very, shall we say, it, it handles more like a bow fighter, but it's got the engine power of a duck. If you don't know what I mean by the duck, if you've been living under a rock, um, that is the HS129 B2. Not the B3, that thing's not a duck. That thing is the Panzer Quacker. So why, do I, why did I come to this assessment about this vehicle? Well, there's a few reasons for that. The engines are rather poor, and also the 37mm gun that you have underneath is pretty... I mean, it's not its not got the velocity and the penetration of the Ducks 37mm, but it basically makes this thing like a slightly more maneuverable Duck, but it also has the controllability of a bow fighter. And additionally, it comes with two 50 caliber machine guns, a bit like you would have on the Duck with the 792s. But unlike the Duck, you do have one distinct advantage. You get a rear gunner. Now, sure, this rear gunner I've had no success with. This rear gun is a Scotty machine gun, which from what I've seen in terms of muzzle velocity and belt choices for the turret, is exactly the same as a Breda Safa, it just seems to be a turret version of that. But otherwise, this is not a great turret, and well, at least the gunner gets a bit of armor to protect him. But as you will notice, the pilot gets quite a bit. 8mm is protecting his rear seating, the lower part of the aircraft as well, and the nose. And he also gets a pretty good chunk of 38mm bulletproof glass. As a result, this thing is pretty tanky. The engines are vulnerable to fires like a duck, but it's still pretty tanky like a bow fighter. So you can you can actually take quite a bit of a beating in this thing, but of course once your engines start getting hit, that's when the problems arise. In terms of the one engine test, because as you all know, I like to see if a twin engine aircraft can fly on one engine. Uh, the answer is no, because I've not been able to get this thing back to base on one engine. You may have your own personal experiences, but even so, I've not been able to get this aircraft back to base in its current format. But you never know, maybe using mech and feather in the prop might just do it. I don't know. But if anyone does happen to get this aircraft back to base on one engine, please tell us how you did it in the comments below. So, let's go over the weaponry and let's go over the bomb loads that you can carry in this aircraft. So starting out with the main, shall we say, the mainstay of this aircraft, we have a 37mm Breda Model 39 37-45 cannon. From what Harry tells me, this was essentially meant to be an attempt at it, well, Italy making a Bovers, the 40mm Bovers, but it went so horribly wrong, it might as well not have been made. But in this format, we're using it as ground attack, which it does pretty good at. Having 42 rounds and a decent rate of fire, with the cycle time being pretty good, you can easily get a few shots off with this 37mm, and with the penetration it does have, it's still pretty sufficient to deal with most tanks at this BR, although you will start to struggle as you get up to it, of course, but that's when you attack from above, with the bow fighter like handling. We then also have two 50 caliber machine guns, which are Breda Safats, Mounted in the, I'd say the wing roots, but it's also more in the fuselage at this point. And these get 350 rounds each. These are pretty okay to have, I mean they're nice backups. But otherwise, you won't exactly be relying on these for your main ground attack capability. But of course, the engines themselves are Fiat A74RC38s, and of course the electrics will fail. There's your one Italy car joke for you. And these have 729 horsepower on 100% and 857 horsepower on the web. I bet you're wondering why I made a Fiat joke there, because one one person I know has a Fiat 500 and the electrics went on it after like two years, so that's why I made that joke. But um, 
In terms of the bomb load, as you'll notice, we've got a very unusual looking bomb underneath the fuse, well, underneath the wings here. These are where the bombs are mounted. You do not get access to a bomb bay. You do not get access to a bomb site, being an attacker aircraft. And the only real notable bombs are these ones here. These are 160 kilogram AP-160 bombs. You get two of them, they drop at the same time. Let's go over what else you can carry. You can carry two 50 kilogram bombs, two 100 kilogram bombs, two semi-armor piercing kilogram, well, 100 kilogram bombs, Bear in mind though, these have less explosive but more penet well, actually less penetration. I'm guessing these are more for ships? I don't know. Because it's a bit unusual how the general purpose bomb has more penetration than the semi-armor piercing, but I don't freaking know. And then the AP-160 has 60 kilograms of explosive with 93 millimeters of penetration on its target. These bombs are pretty okay. I've only really used them twice, and as you're going to see in the spade stats, this vehicle didn't go too great. And I'm not saying it's a bad aircraft, because Oddballs did a video on this aircraft, and he did pretty well in Grand Forces, so no doubt once I take requests again, I'm probably going to get this thing in Grand Forces, which I'll be more than happy to do that for you lot. But obviously, until then... um. I won't be taking requests, so you won't see this aircraft in ground forces, but I'll be more than happy to revisit it if needed. In terms of the 37mm penetration, we actually don't get that much penetration, but it's still good enough. 49mm at 10 meters, realistically you're going to get around 39 to 30 millimeters. That's not impressive, but I've certainly had worse. So you're going to be able to kill stuff, but not as much as you might think. Now, recently, well, I say that, the recent criticism on the, um, well, the newer Spade Review templates, which is obviously what you're seeing now, um, one user asked for me to go over the recommended modules, which I will certainly do that for you. So... The way I would spade this aircraft is to get the radiator unlocked because this aircraft does overheat quite a bit on um, hot maps. On cold maps, it's not so bad. I'd then focus on either getting the 37mm online or the compressor, just to allow for a bit more engine power and maneuverability. After that, you're going to want to get the 37mm upgraded so that way the spread is less and also the... Um, capability of the gun is more refined because obviously you don't get as much spray you can put your shots on target more accurately and you can go from there but obviously before you get to here you'd have to choose between engine and turret 12.7 i personally would leave this till last get engine and wings repair and then once that's all that done get the bombs and then focus on the rest because obviously you've got the rest to figure out but that's my personal upgrade path. I would do it that way because otherwise you're going to be either lacking power or you're going to have a useless turret which even with the belts does absolutely nothing. So let's go take a look at the spade view table table and let's see how this spade went. I'll see you all in a minute. So as you can tell we are on my desktop once again as you can tell by the time as well if you're looking at the time down in the bottom right. Yes, I am doing these in bulk just to get them done because I've, I've got time. <laughs> I don't care. Um, and this is the FC20 business results. Obviously, the asterisk represents a 10% RP booster to get the aircraft spaded. And this one only took five flights, but this was not particularly amazing. Battle number one was one air kill, no ground kills, no assists. I did die in that match. 4,410 SL, 570 RP. Battle number two was one air kill, 15 ground units, zero assists, no death, 17,393 SL, 776, or 766 sorry, RP. That is the battle you're going to be seeing today. Battle three was zero air kills. 6 ground kills, no assists, I did die in that match, 4,359 SL, 296 RP. Battle number 4 was 0 air kills, 2 ground kills, 1 assist. I did die in that match, but it did not show my player card for some reason. I don't know why, because the pilot was dead, but 
you tell me. 6,321 SL, 729 RP, and battle number 5, which is the match to spade the aircraft, was 0 air kills, 7 ground kills, no assists, I did die, thanks Harry, um, <laughs> it'll explain, um, 11,400 SL, 859 RP, and 0.12 tons of base bombing. Not a bad spade, but I've certainly had better. This was certainly an aircraft that I wasn't particularly impressed by, but it did feel very much like a bow fighter, as previously mentioned, and I do like the bow fighters, so it's very nice to have something that feels at least familiar to me. But obviously, it does have the engine power of a duck, so you've got to take that into consideration. But, shall we go take a look at what the. or well, how the actual battles went, and how battle number two went? I think we should, so let's go take a look. And welcome to the match. So, as previously mentioned, this is the second flight of the aircraft, and this was the match where I sort of... I, I'll admit, I made a couple of mistakes, which I probably shouldn't have done, to be brutally honest, so don't do what I did. It's called tabbing out. Um, I tabbed out because my Spotify decided to start playing up, because as you all know, I play music whenever I fly in most of my aircraft that I spade or whatever. And as a result, um, my Spotify started to act a bit glitchy, so I tabbed out to briefly sort it. And one player on the enemy team called Peace Drops, I don't know how you say that, took advantage of that. But let's get ahead of us. So the climb rate of this aircraft, when... I, well, I mean, I only had like two mods in this match, so I can't really say. The climb rate isn't impressive, but it's about equivalent to a duck. To be really honest, or like a bow fighter. As a result, you're not exactly going to be having the most amazing matches in terms of the well, getting up to altitude, but it's enough. So here's where I got tunnel vision. Obviously, I I was too busy swap my swipe fire, and then obviously I heard tracers going off, and I was like, "Yep, kind of need to get back in the game. Swipe if I can wait." And that's my only kill for this match on a very shall we say, unaware Yak-7 pilot. But as you can tell, the controllability is good enough for me to dodge most of the Key 43 shots, and the bullets that he has hit us with have barely done any damage. And there's another hit on our wing. The aircraft's tanky nature really allows it to take some hits from low caliber slash higher caliber low velocity machine guns like the Key 43 has. And as a result, it really does give this aircraft a, a good bit of work, because even in ground forces, as long as they don't hit your engines, this thing can take a beat in for the most part. And obviously, I haven't took it into ground forces, but I would predict that this aircraft would do pretty well, given I watched Oddball's video on it, and it did pretty well. But, obviously, as you saw in that video of his, he... He took engine damage and then this thing fell out of the sky. It's not exactly an aircraft that you take engine damage with. So coming onto the targets, obviously I'm looking for a armoured car, preferably, because obviously I didn't have the 37mm belt unlocked at this point. And there goes the ground target. And as you can tell, the airspeed of this aircraft isn't particularly impressive. It's not really an aircraft that you'd go around acting like a sports car, really. It's more of an aircraft that allows you to just get involved in the match and just do your job, really. I mean, if you get an air kill, that's a nice handy dandy bonus. But otherwise, this is really what you're going to be doing. And as a result, it's it's not particularly an exciting aircraft. But I reckon it will do some good in ground forces. That I do have to say. So... As you can tell, the Braders are pretty handy for taking out the lighter targets, and obviously I tried to get on the machine gun in the back over there, but that, that's not going to work, and the machine gun can't really elevate down all that much, so there's no real point in using it. But otherwise, it it was a nice little aircraft to fly. I mean, yeah, I had a bad, a bad experience with it, for the most part, but... It did its job. I mean, it's a nice ground attacking aircraft. It's got good armament for this. 
I've had worse ground attackers, I'll tell you that right now. P108 Series 2. Um, but this this is certainly a good ground attacker. Of course, it's far better than the P108, but you get the point. I mean, who really likes the P108 realistically? Took a few shots at the light pillbox with the 37mm there. It can do it, but it takes quite a few shots to do it. There's another ground target for me, and there's an armoured card in front. Obviously, I have to pull up to avoid the tree. And this is where I do use the Scotty machine gun in the back. But being stock, it takes a long time to get hits on target. And even then, I just wouldn't rely on that machine gun to defend yourself. I mean, if you can shoot back, you might as well, but it ain't gonna get a kill unless you get bloody lucky. Let's put it that way. At this point, I spotted the Condor and I thought, I'll fire a couple of 37s his way. But, I'm never gonna hit that, so I thought, yeah, I'll just let the aircraft stall and I'll go back to farming. Obviously you'll notice I'm taking out the AAA pieces first and the 50 cows are now out by the way um, and as a result I'm just going to be doing this for the next few minutes because that's all this thing really can do. I mean it can fight against certain aircraft but most of the time against single engine fighters you're going to need them or you're going to need them to be unaware of your presence in order for you to actually do something against them. But might as well show the pillbox being destroyed, because some people might not think that the 37 can't, well, can do it. And it can, it just takes quite a few shots. But, that's pretty much it. So like I say, I'm not a huge fan of this aircraft in RRB, mainly due to the fact that I got constant up tiers. This is one of the few down tiers that I received. But, does that mean it's bad? No. I think this thing's more of a ground attacking sort of aircraft in ground forces and obviously once I take requests again I'll no doubt get a combo request for this aircraft so I'll be more than happy to showcase that in a video at some point. But anyway I'm gonna let it guys off I hope you enjoyed today's review on the FC20 Biz like I say it's not an aircraft that air I'll be in my personal opinion but even so I'm sure everyone else will find their use of it in ground forces but anyway I'll see you all on the next one.